My name is Nancy Ball and I'm here with my friend Allison Burnham. Good to be here Nancy. We're going to talk about ways to protect your food from other omnivores out there when you're backpacking. So let's get started by doing our bear hang. Sounds like a plan. Okay. First thing I'm doing is I'm putting a weight on the end of my line and I happen to have this awesome little rock bag that was made for this purpose. Um, so I've got just a small rock just to give it some weight because this line is not going to go over by itself. And the goal is to shoot for that branch up there. And I want the rope to end up being about four feet out away from the trunk of the tree um, and not to be tangled up in those little branches up there. That's the goal. So here we go. Okay, Allison, so now we've got the bear hang up. We've got three different ways of using this bear hang, three okay. different ways of protecting our food. So let's talk about all three of them. Yeah. All right. So the first one, this is probably the, uh, the most inexpensive, the most affordable and easy way to do this is we're going to put our food in this waterproof bag, okay. right? And then all we're going to have to do is attach it to this clip, this carabiner on the bear hang. Uh-huh and then we'll just hoist it up. Oh, That's it, okay? And since we have this rope so that it's four feet away from the tree branch yeah. and at least six or more feet above the ground okay. and four feet down from the branch itself, it's gonna be pretty much out of the reach of any bear. So all we have to do is tie it off to this tree over here, okay. which, which we'll do using um, a clove hitch. If a bear does come along and it smells food and it decides to get curious, it's probably going to climb up the tree that you're standing next to to get to it. If I were to tie the line off to that tree, there's an, a chance that the bear could accidentally break the line with its claws as it's climbing and then poof. Down falls our food. Like magic, a bag of food falls right there at its feet. So okay. we don't want to teach it to do that. So I'm going to yeah. tie it off to this other tree. Okay. So that's one way to use it. All right. A second way to use this Let's say you're not backpacking alone. Let's say you're backpacking with a group of friends. Sure. And maybe instead of one bag, we have two, three, two even three. four. Okay. Well, this one slides pretty easily because it's light. Yeah. But if I had four bags with food for like four days in it and mm -hmm. I had to pull it up, it's going to get really heavy. And the friction oh, of the yeah. rope yeah. over the branch, it gets really hard, especially this is a thin line and yeah. it hurts your hands if it's real heavy. Yeah, and you're so we're going to do something it. to make it easier. So let's do this together. Okay. First of all, we're going to take this one off. Okay. Um, I think you have a big carabiner, right? I do. Let me have that. Yep. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is run the second line through the large carabiner. Okay. And I'm going to need your help with this yeah. one a little bit. Let's get it untangled. Okay. okay. Your job is to not let that red line get away from okay. you. Okay. We're going to pull it all the way up to the tree branch. Let's get us unlooped here. Here you go. All the way up to the tree branch. And then I'm going to tie this line off on this tree over here. And okay. for the same reason, it's going to be tied to a different tree than, um, This got a long rope here to get under control. Going to be tied to a different tree than what the food is hanging from. And again, that's because if a bear were to go for where the smell is coming from, he's not going to be able to get our line. Correct. We want to keep him from accidentally getting a food reward by climbing that tree and perhaps breaking the string with his claws. So I'm just using a clove hitch knot. This is a really big tree. Normally you don't have to walk all the way around them to do it, but the effect is the same. The end result's the same. Here's a clove hitch. On a different session, we'll actually get into knots, but for now I'll just tell you that's a clove hitch followed by a half hitch. And I got this line over out of the way. Okay, now, instead of this rope running over the tree branch, yeah. it's running over that carabiner, which oh, is a lot smoother. Yeah. So it's kind of acting like a pulley. Yeah. It's not okay. really a pulley. It doesn't have wheels, but it's similar. So, okay. So our, our uh, smaller carabiner. Yep. We're going to hook the food bag onto that. Okay. 
I've got another food bag here I'm going to hook onto it. And we've hung as many as like five food bags all on the same line. Wow. And even though it's heavy, I can still pull it up pretty easily. I'm going to get it to wow. where it's about four feet below that tree branch. And again, I'll tie it off using a clove hitch over it's here on this tree. large tree. Cool? That is very cool. But that's not all. We've got uh -oh. another way we can do this. Now, Nancy, while we're setting up for this next one, why is it so important to keep our food away from the other omnivores in in nature? Like, I don't know, like, bears are kind of cool. Bears are kind of cool. Actually, part of the answer is obvious. I mean, we need that food. I mean, if we're out four days away from a trailhead and our food gets stolen, we could really be in deep trouble. Fair. But even more importantly than that, um, the effect that it has on wildlife is really bad for them. Mm. So we want to protect them from getting access to our food. Once any kind of animal gets easy access to people food and they realize it tastes good and that, hey, those people who are walking around often have it mm. or the places they camp, then um, it changes their foraging habits. It doesn't meet their nutritional needs. And then lastly, it tends to make animals aggressive toward people because they associate yeah. it with food. And unfortunately, that usually does not end well yeah. for the animal. I was just gonna ask, is that like, you know, you see those videos of like squirrels or monkeys sometimes in places that are just like really like in people's faces. Seriously, and yes, for sure, yeah. And you know, in fact, in the Grand Canyon, the most, the animal that has sent more people to um, the emergency room than anything else in the Grand Canyon is this little rock squirrel because they've gotten so accustomed to people food and they will aggressively go after your wow. food and bite you to get it. Wow. <laughs> it's well, really then, crazy. Yeah, it's, so, it's good so, to know these things. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So let's, let's do this third hand. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So this next one, this is, um, this is actually called the PCT method and PCT stands for Pacific Crest Trail. Okay. And it's used um, in places where the bears have gotten smart enough that they recognize a hanging bag as having something ah. that has food. So kind of like you ha were ta just talking about, they've become sort of accustomed to like, oh, that's a treat bag. Exactly, I exactly. I was at a uh, national park once and a ranger told me that he actually saw a mama bear put a baby bear on her shoulder so the baby bear <gasps> could reach the food bag. So wow. some of them have gotten really, really smart. But wow. this one, um, what it's going to do is keep it from being tied to a tree at all. So there's no chance of a bear cutting the rope. So if they have learned through accident, through happy accident, that if you cut the rope on a tree, sometimes food falls at your feet, this will keep them from being able to get it. Wow. So you see, I've got the food bag up there and I pulled it all the way up to the tree branch. Now I'm going to reach up as high as I can reach. And I'm going to tie, this is in essence, another clove hitch, like we tried tied to the tree, uh -huh. but I'm doing it aerially. Okay. So I'm going to do it by making one loop, making a second loop, I stack them on top of each other. I put this stick in the middle of it, so it's about the halfway point on the stick. Okay. So now I've got my half hitch on there. And then what happens is when I let go, the food bag goes that far and it hangs up oh, okay. on the stick. So you took the, the like loose line, mm -hmm. the working line, mm -hmm. and threw the carabiner and then with the stick and that's Correct. The like the locking mechanism. Exactly, you okay. got it. And it's still at least six feet off the ground, four feet or more below the branch above and is still four feet away from the tree trunk. So now it's out of reach of the bear. And this string hanging down, bears don't have opposable thumbs. So all they can do is sort of bat it around. Okay. And if they were actually by accident to even hook a claw, the only thing they could do is pull it back up. Huh. They can't get it down. Wow. So it's a pretty safe way of securing your food. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. And then when I need it, all I have to do is take this stick back out. Oh, I've got my that. food. I've got my food. Okay, so I have another question. Okay, what's that? Um, bears aren't the only thing in the wilderness that might want to eat our food. Mm-hmm. Or that might damage our food. Mm -hmm. So what about other things? Like squirrels. Yeah. Like rock squirrels, right? Yeah, like Or rock mice. Squirrels. Or possums or raccoons. All of those guys are climbers, right? And yeah. they, they can actually get out on that little branch. And some of them can climb down oh, ropes, right? Yeah. right? So that's important. It's another really, really good question. This particular food bag is one solution to it. First of all, it's waterproof, so it can hang out here in the rain and my food will still be dry inside. Cool. Second of all, it's made out of a material called Dyneema, mm. which is, um, it's a super strong, it's kind of like Tyvek sort wow. of material. And uh, rodents can't get their claws or their teeth into it. So this, is a, this bag would not be bear proof 
but it would be rodent proof or pretty cool. rodent resistant. They'd have a hard time getting into it. Another option, this is just a standard dry bag mm -hmm. that I sometimes use to hang my food in. Um, so again, again waterproof. waterproof, not bear proof. It's actually not rodent proof either, but I put my food inside this wire mesh bag inside ah, the dry bag. It's like, it's like chain mail for your food. <laughs> exactly, chain mail for my food, that's it. So those little critters can't chew it because that's all made out of metal wire. Well, I'm showing you what's in this bag. I should also mention, it's not only your food that needs to go in these things, uh -huh. anything that has a scent that might track an, attract an animal needs to go in here. So that might mean your deodorant or the, your suntan lotion or your tooth, toothbrush and toothpaste for sure. All of those things need to go in here. Um, anything that might cause an animal to be curious enough to check out a smell and maybe like hang around your campsite sure. or try to chew into your tent to get to it. You just want to avoid that. But the other thing too is that any trash that you have. So like after I eat my food out mm -hmm. of my plastic bag, my plastic bag now has a food scent. So I carry these big garbage bags and okay. it's, this is actually called an op sack. It's supposed to be basically odor proof. Okay. Now, I know that bears still smell food through this, but what it does is it keeps the smell of my trash separate from the smell of my food yeah. for me. So yeah. I keep those in my, in my food bag. Mm -hmm.